Okay. Let me get reduce the volume because I don't know what the class so it's too loud. All right, why don't we all just pray together and then we'll get started. Father, we thank you for a new day. Thank you for the opportunity to come together like this in this classroom and those who have joined us online uh, to study your word and those who will be also on the e-learning course. Thank you for each one. And Lord, as we journey through this course, we ask that the Holy Spirit will open our eyes, open our minds, open our hearts, oh God to understand, to receive this truth, to be transformed by your truth and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we ask that you will so work in us as we look into your word, that our lives will be changed and that we will live these truths out day to day. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Everyone said, Amen. Amen. All right, so... I'm going to be doing this course, BC110, uh, Identity, uh, with you this year, the first year students. And um, it's a very simple course, but also a very, very important course. All of you have got the notes uh, with you. Uh, students who are joining us online, the PDF is in the coursework section of uh, the Google Classroom. So you can download it from there. And um, those who are um, uh, in the e-learning, it will also be available in the e-learning portal, so you could uh, also download the PDF. And just, you know, follow along with me in this course. So let's just kind of introduce the course, what are we going to actually uh, learn in this course, and then we will get, get going. Somebody, if somebody comes and asks, who are you? Now, tell me about yourself. Uh, most of us will start, my name is, you know, we'll say my name is something. And we will talk about different things. We'll talk about maybe, you know, where we were born. Uh, we might say something about our parents. I was born in this city. I uh, grew up in this place. My parents were this. Uh, we may say something about our education. I studied here. Uh, we may say something about our interests. Uh, we may even say something about what we have done in life, if you know, if you're uh, working or doing something. Um, so, usually, for many of us, that forms our identity. That is who I am. Somebody asks who you are, you say those things, and it's okay. It's in the natural. Right? Uh, it helps people know something about us. In the natural. But those things, those things um, can sometimes, let's say, you know, if we have gone through difficult things in life, difficult circumstances, situations, which many of us have, those things are there in the background, but who we really are. Uh, many times uh, is shaped, is affected by our life experiences, what we've gone through. You know, so we could have been born in a nice place, in a nice family, have a great education, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all of that. But because we've gone through, we've all gone through different things, different things in life, uh, difficult things in life. Those affect us. And for some of us, maybe our identity is broken. We sometimes I feel very ashamed. Example, if I failed in my studies, I don't want others to know about that. Or if I failed in, you know, my business, I don't, I, you know, I, I feel ashamed about that. Uh, because, but that's part of life. We've all gone through different things. Where in some ways we've succeeded, some ways we failed. And uh, our identity is, uh, you know, affected by those things. But. What I want, what we want to emphasize in this course is while there is this natural identity, that means where we were born and all these things we talked about, those are real. I'm not denying that. It's real. As believers, as believers in Jesus Christ, 
God has given us an identity in Christ. A spiritual identity in Christ. God has given it to us. And we're going to discover that. And what we must understand is that the spiritual identity we have is more important and it is more powerful than our natural identity. That means whatever we've gone through in life, in the natural. You know, we can't select who our parents were. We can't select what happened, you know, the first 20 years of our life. That was all, you know, outside our control very much. And so many things happened in life. It's okay. But the spiritual identity that you have in Christ is very powerful. It's your true identity. And it's more powerful than whatever you've gone, you and I have gone through in our natural journey in life. And we must learn to live out of our spiritual identity more than our natural identity. Yeah, if somebody comes and asks me, what's your name? I will say, Ashish Raishu. I'm not going to say, I am son of God. <laughs> They'll think uh, he belongs to the mental institution. <laughs> I won't say that. I said, my name is Ashish Raichu. But in my spirit, I know I'm a child of God. So I ask, okay, uh, where, where do you live? So yeah, I live in Bangalore. I'm not going to say I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. <laughs> That's my address. <laughs> no, they'll think <laughs> something's gone wrong. So I will say I live in Bangalore. But in my spirit, I know where I am in the spiritual realm. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. So while, you know, we are normal people in the sense that we do recognize our normal things, we, we talk normally, we behave normally, but there is something inside us. We are living out of our spirit. We are living about, out of our identity in Jesus, in Christ. So, that live, learning to live out of that spiritual identity in your normal life, in your day-to-day -day life, uh, as you go about everything, it is so important and it is so powerful. And that's what we are going to learn in this course. And uh, so we're going to discover what is our true identity, which is more important and it's more real and it's more powerful than your own natural identity. And we're going to learn how do I live out of it? How do I live from my spiritual identity in Jesus Christ? That's what this course is about. Now, uh, as we will see once we start looking at the scriptures, the Lord Jesus, during his earthly ministry, he told his disciples, you're going to receive this revelation. You're going to receive a revelation. He said, after I've gone, you're going to receive a revelation of who you are in me and who I am in you. He told them that. At that time, they probably didn't understand, you know, what is Jesus talking about? You know, he's, going, he's telling us, we are in him and he is in us. What is this? <laughs> but he said, you will know. You're going to know. Jesus went to heaven. And then he gave that revelation to the church. Primarily through the Apostle Paul. So in the writings of the Apostle Paul, of course, we will see this in the Gospels and the teachings of Jesus. Uh, we will see this in the epistles and the writings of the Apostle Paul and uh, others. Over and over again, they point the believer to your life in Christ, your identity in Christ, who you are in Christ. So that's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. So the New Testament is filled with this revelation. It's there. Uh, somebody counted. I didn't count. And maybe you can count as you go through the notes. Uh, there are about more than 130 verses uh, in the New Testament that is telling the believer who they are in Christ, in Him, by Him, through Him. You know, so you can count. I, I didn't count, but 
it's all there. So in the notes, we've tried to cover all these scriptures. We try to put all these scriptures in one book so that it's easy for us to look it up. But that is the basis of our spiritual identity. And we live out of that. Right? Now, um, when I uh, usually, and, and you know, uh, I have to uh, admit that you know, when I was a teenager, wow, it's too loud. Uh, when I was a teenager, so that's when I first got to learn about this, this truth. And it really changed my life, you know. Uh, it really changed my, my life from those teenage years. And from that time till today, I've been teaching, I've been sharing this. It's so it's not... This is not the first time I'm telling about it. Maybe I've done it, I don't know how many hundreds, maybe thousands of times. And so many, so many. I've repeated teaching it over and over again. But every time, every time we go through these scriptures, it's so beautiful. It's, it's wonderful. Just to see who we are in Christ. So again, again. So it's just, just amazing that this is what God has done for us. And one example as, or an illustration that I, I like to use, which is in the introduction, and this is not, you know, it's not to put uh, anything, any, anybody down, but just for an illustration. Suppose you imagine, you know, there is an a, a orphan child, young boy, small boy. Uh, he's orphan and he's living in the slums. So no parents, nothing. Uh, he's living in the slum. Just imagine, okay, example. Um, his life, there is nothing to his life. No parents, no money, no future. Living in the slum, nothing. But imagine a rich family, a rich man, rich family, adopts him and takes that orphan boy, slum boy, into their family. Just imagine. Everything changes in his life. In the slum, somebody asks, what's your name? He doesn't know. Maybe he will say something. Who are your parents? Uh, I don't have any parents. Where do you live? I just sleep on the road. Food, he doesn't know where he's going to get his next meal. Clothes, he doesn't. Nothing. No future. But his whole life is changed the moment he is taken, adopted into this rich family. Now he has a name. The family name is his. His identity comes out of that family. He has good clothes to wear. He has a nice room to sleep in. Everything has changed. Everything has changed. He has a future. They're going to send him to school. They might send him to college. And he has a future. Everything has changed in his life. But imagine. If the slum boy, what does he need to do? He needs to change his thinking. Otherwise, in the morning, imagine he gets up in this big, big house and he gets up and he runs to the slum to play there. He's back in the dirt playing. So why? No, no, that's my place. No, 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 that's not your place. You have been adopted into this family. So stop thinking you're a slum boy and stop going back to that place. Are you understanding? Yeah, so change his thinking. Or imagine he comes for breakfast. Then he sees bread. He takes put it in the pocket. Put it in the pocket. Why? Because he's afraid. I may not get my lunch. Hey, that, that is how you used to think when you were in the slum. Now you don't think like that. There is plenty of food. There are full refrigerators full of food. You will get your lunch, your dinner, everything is taken. But don't think like that. Don't behave like that. But many believers are like this some boy who's been adopted into this, into God's family, but they're still thinking and behaving and living as though they're still in the slum. That's how many believers. And God is saying, oh, I did such a wonderful work for them. I have brought them into my family, in the family of God. I've made them my sons and daughters. I've made them heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. 
but they are still thinking like how they were in the world. They're still thinking like how they were before I brought them here. They're still behaving like that. They're still living at that level instead of living at this level as sons and daughters of God. That's the problem with many uh, of God's people, believers. You understand? So we need to discover this truth and then we need to change our thinking, change our how we think. Think in line with the word of God. Think in line with what God has done for you in Christ. Think in line with your life in Jesus. Think in line with your identity in Christ. Think like that. Of course, I know we are in a natural world. I'm not saying be foolish. And like, you know, go you go outside the thing and say, oh, I am a child of God. No car will hurt me. <laughs> be careful when you cross the road. <laughs> you open your eyes and say, so don't be foolish. Right? There is a proper way uh, to live out this truth. When you cross the road, you'll open your eyes, see both sides, and then cross. <laughs> right? Uh, so we are in the natural world. We are living here. So we have to use our mind. We have to be careful about these things. But at the same time, we are living out of our life in Jesus. Live out of our life in Jesus. That's, that's very important for us. Right? So this truth, how will it change our life? So, um, so God has brought us into Christ. So on page 9 here in the notes. And um, uh, everything has changed in our lives. And I, I just want to emphasize one more thing. Um, bottom of page 9. God completes the work. And he invites us to live out of that. So this is the beautiful thing about our life in Jesus. The work is done by God. So God does the work. He finishes it all. And then he says, I have finished the most important work. Now you live out of that. You live out of that. And we're going to see a lot of things that God has already done for us. And he says, live out of that. That means you, are, you, recognize, you understand that truth. You embrace it for yourself. And then you determine that you're going to live out of that. So God finishes the work. For example, and we're going to study all this. I'm just giving it as an example now. The power of sin for our lives is broken. God broke it. He already dealt with the power of sin. That means sin has no power over you. The Bible says that. Sin will not have control over you. It will not have dominion over you. So as a young boy, when I was growing up, I was saying, oh God, how can I live free from sin? How can I overcome sin? How can I overcome temptation? So I used to, I said, what is the answer? I used to try to read many books and try to understand. But it didn't help until I came to see this truth in the word of God. God has already broken the power of sin that happened on the cross. So God did the work. He said, I, he broke the power of sin. So now you have to live out of it. Sin, you have no power over me. Addiction, you have no power over me. Your power over my life is broken. It happened on the cross 2,000 years ago when Jesus died. So the work has been done. Now we have to live out of it. We have to recognize it, accept it as truth, and then enforce it in our lives. That's our part. That's our work. So God has done his work. Our work is to accept, to understand the truth, accept it as truth, and enforce it in our lives. So this is how it's going to be in my life, because God has done the work. Amen? So that's very important. So God is not expecting us to do the work. He finishes the work. It is already done for us in the spiritual realm. Now we have to live out of that. Now again here, this is a problem. Many believers don't understand that. 
because they think they have to strive for it. I have to attain it. I have to achieve it. No, no, no. Jesus finished the work. You just accept it and live out of that. Yeah. So, how will this truth change your life? Page 10. How will this truth change your life? Number one, it will change our self-image. How we see ourselves. You know, so when, like we said in the natural, you know, we see ourselves through, you know, our upbringing and our education and our life experiences, all that put together uh, give us our natural self image, generally, how people see themselves. But now your self image is going to be based on God's word. This is who you really are. This is how you see yourself. You are an overcomer. You are more than a conqueror. God always causes you to triumph. So when you and I will face challenges in life, God never said we will not face it. But in every situation, you say, I'm, I'm going to win. I'm coming out as an overcomer. I'm not defeated. Because God's word says, he always causes me to triumph. In Christ. God's word says, I am an overcomer. So, your self-image changes. How you see yourself. Uh, so it gives you confidence. It gives you a, a, a great sense of, you know, if you want to use the word, positivity about yourself. You feel very positive. You feel good about yourself. And it's a good thing. Because... Of who you are in Christ, of what God has given to you in Christ. Your self image changes. Secondly, it will change the way you relate to God. Now, sadly, many believers relate to God as though they are sinners. So you imagine that slum boy. If now he's been adopted into this rich family, the husband and wife in this family, they want to be father and mother to this boy. And they are. They've adopted him. But imagine he comes to this father. Can I have, oh, please give me one rupee. Please give me one rupee. You were behaving like that in the slum. But in this house, you are son. They are your parents. Don't come. Give me one rupee. Give me one piece of bread, please. One bread, only one bread. I won't ask anything more. Oh, it's your will. Please give me one cup of milk, please. If it is your will. If it is not your will, it is okay. Now that's how many Christians are behaving. Are you understanding? Does God want us to behave like that? No. He does not want. I'll show you from scripture. He does not want us to behave like that. But when we pray, that's how we are praying. We are praying like the slum boy. When God has said, I've made you my son, my daughter. So don't pray like a slum boy. Pray like a son. Father, thank you. You love me so much. I enjoyed the breakfast today. For lunch, I like to have some chicken biryani. Something, you know, you, you behave like a son or a daughter. So how we relate to God? I'm not saying we lose reverence for God. No. In fact, when you understand this truth, you love God so much more that he would be so gracious to you and me to do this for us. So you love him even more. You worship him even more. You adore him even more. You have even greater reverence for God. So it's not like there's a, it's a sign of disrespect, but your relationship with God changes. You're not relating to God as a sinner because you're not a sinner. You're relating to God as a son and as a daughter of God. Are you understanding? So how we pray, by listening to how people pray, you can tell them, ah, he's behaving like a slum boy. I don't say it, but you can recognize how they pray. Oh God. 
have mercy on us, God. We are unworthy sinners. Hey, you're no longer an unworthy sinner. You were an unworthy sinner. Now you're a saint. Now you are an heir of God. Now you're a joint heir with Jesus. Recognize it. Talk like that. Pray like that. God said, Romans 8, 15. He does not want us to behave like cringing, fearful slaves. But he wants us to cry out, Abba, Father. So he said, don't behave like that. Behave like a son. Call me Abba, Father. Are you understanding? So our self, how we relate to God also changes. When you understand this truth. But if you don't understand this truth, if you don't receive revelation, you still behave like a slum boy. You can be a Christian for 40, 50 years, but when you pray, you'll pray like a slum boy. Very sad. But that has to change. We have to pray. We have to relate to God as adopted in his own family. We are his sons and daughters. We will talk like him. We will pray like him. We will relate to him. We will have that much confidence in him. Because he's done this for us. It will change our lifestyle. So when we live out of these truths, how we live life will change. We will live out of the reality uh, of the work he has already finished for us. We will overcome sin. We will overcome uh, different things. We will Our lifestyle, whole lifestyle will be changed. In Romans chapter 12, as we, we will see later. But Paul uses the word metamorphosis. Now, be transformed. Have a metamorphosis. Be transformed in your life. Don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed. It's like... The caterpillar becoming a butterfly. So our lifestyle will change. Instead of being that little worm that goes crawling on the, you know, like a caterpillar, you'll be like a beautiful butterfly flowing, you know, flying everywhere. Beautiful. Colorful. Caterpillar, there's nothing attractive about it. But your whole lifestyle changes when you and I understand this truth. You'll be living in a different realm right it will change you all with me now page 11 yeah it will change the way you face challenges and difficulties in life yes jesus said in the world you will have tribulation of course there will be different challenges we all have to go through different things so you have to navigate of course but we will face them as conquerors, more than conquerors. We will face them as overcomers. We will face them knowing that God will cause us to triumph. God will bring us out as winners. We will, Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So because he has overcome, we will overcome. So we'll, have, we'll be cheerful. Yes, it's hard, challenges, but be cheerful because he's going to bring us out as overcomers. That's his word. Uh, it will change the way we face demons and demonic powers. We will not be afraid of Satan. Not afraid of his demons. Not afraid. Don't think that they can do anything against us. No. You're so confident because you know you're in Christ. You know you're seated at the Father's right hand. You know that Satan and all his demons are underneath your feet. Uh, they may, you know, do their work of attacking and tempting and all of that, but you're not intimidated by those things. You know you, are an, you have authority and dominion over demonic powers. You're not afraid. You're fearless. You're bold in the face of demonic uh, powers. It will change the way we relate to people. So when we relate to people, you will be able to relate to them with grace, with compassion. Yeah, of course, now and then we'll make mistakes, but we'll overcome those mistakes. And we'll learn to relate to people with love, with compassion, with kindness, because we are operating out of the life that God has given to us. So we can love people. We can be kind. We can be compassionate. We can be patient. So how we relate to other people will change. And even what we see in them will change. We can see hope in them. We can see, you know, the, what God has done in them. We will look at that. And most importantly, all of this will lead us to be just like Jesus. So the key, 
This is key. Learning to live out of uh, our identity in Christ. It, as we live out, out of that life in Christ, eventually our life will be just like His. And that's what we are called to be. We are called to be like Jesus. So people say, hey, you, you, your life is like that. It's representing Jesus more and more and being uh, re revealing Jesus to people. Okay? So, any questions now before we get started? Let me see online students. Any questions? Feel free to ask questions, please. There's nothing wrong in asking questions. Any questions from anyone here? So far, you all with me? You understood? Yeah, it's clear. Online, everyone's fine. Okay. Very good. All right. So let's get started. And, uh, you know, many of these scriptures, we have put it in the notes so you can uh, look at it there. Or if you want to turn into your Bibles and look at it there in your Bibles, that's also fine. So the first thing is to be introduced to this revelation. Revelation is simply meaning means an unveiling of truth. Revelation means a truth is unveiled to us. It's revealed to us. Right? That means we now understand it, we embrace it, we accept it. In John chapter 14, verses 19 and 20, Jesus was talking to his disciples one day, and he told them this. A little while longer, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. So he's talking about his death and resurrection. After some time, the world won't see me. I'll be crucified, buried. But after that, you will see me. So when he's resurrected, the disciples will get to see Jesus. But the, not everybody, the world won't get to see him. And he says, because I live, you will live also. And look at verse 20, John 14, 20. At that day, that means in the time after his resurrection, at that day, you will know, you're going to know something. You're going to receive a revelation of something. At that day, after I rise up from the dead, you will know. What will you know? That I am in my Father, you in me. And I in you. He's telling them. He's telling them that this revelation is coming. At that day, you're going to know. I am in the Father. That means that the union that Jesus has with the Father. That same kind of union the believers in Jesus are going to have with him. It's a spiritual union. We're going to see it later in scripture. But the kind of relationship or union that the Lord has with the Father, that's the kind of relationship the believers have with Jesus. You in me and I in you. Now, it sounds confusing, but it's simply saying we're going to be so connected with each other. And maybe there's no other way to put it. You in me, I in you. We're just going to be connected. You in me. That means your identity, your life is coming from Jesus. He in us. It means he is fully revealed and expressed through us. So you have to tell yourself, and we have to tell ourselves, I am in Jesus and Jesus is in me. Right? So let's say it together. I am in Jesus and Jesus is in me. So he said, you'll understand. You are in me, I am in you. It's connection. And the course, this course, is a journey into that. To understand, what does it mean for me to be in Christ and Christ to be in me? Uh, that, that this union, the spiritual union that you and I have with Jesus and how to live out of that. So he went on to talk to his disciples. And we see this in the very next chapter. 
where he tried to give them a little picture to help them understand what he just said. So that's John 15, verse 1 through 5. And he used the picture of the wine, a plant, a plant and its branches. He's using that as an illustration to explain what does it mean? You are in me, I am in you. What does it mean? Okay, think about the plant. The plant and its branches. Think about that. So he, he explains that. John 15, verse 1 to 5. Jesus said, I am the true wine. My father is a wine dresser. So father is like the gardener. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch in me that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Verse 4, abide in me and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the wine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the wine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. So he's giving this picture. So if you look at just verse 5, I mean, there's a lot we can study from each of these verses but uh, I just look at we just look at verse 5 he says I am the wine you are the branches so that's the connection and that connection is already established by God the branch doesn't crawl up to the wine and say can I join you no it came out of the wine that's something God did we are born of God when we receive Jesus, we are born of God. So Jesus is the wine. You and I are branches on the wine. God did that connection. We are in Him. He is in us. But now, we have to actively live out of that. Practically live out of that. That's the rest of that verse. He who abides in me and I in him. So the first part is that connection God did. But the rest of that verse, you and I have to do. That we have to abide in that. And He in us. We have to live out of that. Which is what we want to learn in this course. How do I do that? Right? And if we do that, then what will happen? You will bear much Fruit will come. You see, the apple tree, how do you know something is an apple tree or banana tree or mango tree or tamarind tree? The apple tree is not born with the label, I am an apple tree. No. You know it's an apple tree, a mango tree, because you see the fruit. That's it. Now, I, I don't have a label saying pastor, 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 pastor. I don't need a label. You see the fruit. By the fruit, you will. If you don't have any fruit, label is no use. You understand, right? So how will that fruit come? It says here, verse 5. You abide in me, I in him. That means you are now living out of that relationship with Jesus. You're living out of that life in Jesus. What will happen? If you abide in me, I in you, you will bear much fruit will come. You'll bear much fruit. So this is a secret to live a fruitful life in Jesus. Secret. You have to live out of your life in Christ. You live out of that life. Practically, you live out of this. What will happen? You will bear much fruit. It says, so without me, you can do nothing. That means uh, outside of this relationship, whatever we do, it really amounts to nothing. But here's the thing. Jesus once again spoke about this relationship by saying, he is the wine, we are the branches. We're connected to Him. 
So when you think about this, what's in the wine is in the branch. What's in the wine is in the branch. His life is flowing through you. Because you are a branch connected to the wine. His life is flowing through you. What does it mean? His wisdom is in you. His love is flowing through you. What's in him is in you. You say, how can you say that? Well, just imagine. Branch in the wine. Does the branch have the same thing that's flowing through the wine? Of course. The wine is, the plant is connected to the ground and the nutrients come. Same thing is flowing through. The same life is flowing through. So the source of your life, of everything you have, is coming from Jesus in the spirit. This is a spiritual relationship, right? So it's coming from Jesus. What's in him is in you. Right? And then we express that. Expressing that life is the fruit, right? That life is seen in you. His, his wisdom is seen in you. His love is seen in you. That's the fruit you're bearing. Other people are touched through his life in you. That's the fruit. So it's pretty simple. If we live out of our life in Christ, we will bear much fruit. That's the secret. All right? So. Lesson number three, we're going to please turn in our Bibles to Ephesians 1. So I'd love, I'd love for us to do this little exercise. So if you turn in your Bibles, please, to Ephesians 1. And we will read the first 14 verses. And after we read the first 14 verses, I want you to take a little bit of time to underline where, wherever you see in Christ, in Him, by Him. I want you to underline that. Okay. Uh, if you don't want to spoil your Bible or anything, then you <laughs> write it on the side. It's okay. But if you're fine with marking in your Bible, go ahead and mark. Uh, this particular Bible, I don't like to mark. I just use it when I go outside. I have a Bible at home on my desk that is fully colored and marked. That's what I used to read. But this is, I take it when I go outside, so I don't mark this. Um, Ephesians 1, uh, verses 1 to 14. Uh, we're going to read through it. And as you read through it, underline. Wherever it says, in Christ, in Him, by Him, through Him, Underline it because it's telling us something about our life in Christ. Okay, so I'm going to read this passage. Please follow with me. Uh, then we'll go for our break. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus. Underline that. In Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Underline that. In Christ. Verse 3. Verse 4. Just as He chose us in Him. Underline that. In Him. He chose us in Him. Before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love having predestinated us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glory, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Underline that. In the beloved. It's another way of saying in Christ. In the beloved. That is in Christ. He's made us accepted in Christ. Verse 7. In him. Underline that. It's again talking about what we have in Jesus. In Him, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His grace, which He made to abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence, 
having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the times he might gather together in one all things in Christ underline that he's going to gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him again in him verse 11 in him again underline that in him also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will that we who first trusted in Christ underline should be to the praise of his glory verse 13 in him underline in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom underline in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory so you see just in these 14 verses how many times how many 11 is it or is it more 11 many times 11 times somebody said um, the phrase in him in Christ in whom is being used it's and when it is when he's speaking of the believer he's really saying believer this is what you have in Christ just as it's one passage so many times and we can literally spend hours if we have to explain each one of those points you know and we will start one by one we will go through it we have to explain each one in whom you're, he says you know you're blessed with all spiritual blessings in him you were chosen before the foundation of the world in her, in him you are covered with his, by his love in him in him you are accepted in the beloved in him we have redemption in him uh, we have what is this uh, we have an inheritance uh, in him we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise so many different things all these are yours it is true about you as a believer in and this is only one passage so we look through the epistles we'll find many 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 things that God is saying is yours in Christ. okay so there's a little exercise here we will take a break and we'll come back at 11 and we'll continue from here uh, we'll take it forward if you have any questions you're most welcome to ask so let's take a quick 10 minutes break come back at 11 continue